Hey there, everybody. It's Brad Reed again with the Inside Creative Writing Podcast for another real-time revision. Again, thank you so much for being a uh, member of the Patreon team. Uh, that just means so much to me. Um, I, I wanted to explore something that I struggle with in my writing. The uh, last few weeks, I've been kind of just searching through my draft uh, for these crutch words that I've been trying to get out of to make my writing more concise and more powerful. And uh, I had kind of forgotten about um, this whole issue with ing words. As you can see, I've I've already searched here for some ing words, and you can see them popping up everywhere. In fact, there's over 3,000 of them in my draft, and sometimes these are not, um, not that big a deal, right? But uh, seeing all of these show up um, got me thinking, why, why is it so important to get these words out? And what are they doing exactly that's weakening the writing? So I did a little bit of research because this is one of those things I hadn't looked into very much. Um, I've always known, I've always heard that, they are, that they're weak um, and that we need to get them out of the way. And a uh, little research I did really is showing that uh, sometimes... Um, it's a signal that we're just reusing a word in a wrong tense, but more often it's actually a sign of where we can get rid of some additional words and make things more, more clear. So let me show you an example here uh, that I just pulled up. Uh, Phil had been right, thank God, after another day of hiking along the highway, a day that went more smoothly than we had expected, we started to see houses set back off the road. So what's going on here with hiking? That doesn't sound bad initially, but look at this little word of here, right? Because I've structured this as uh, the gerund form with the ing um, of hiking here, uh, or of hiking, I need to have this helper word of after another day hiking along the highway. So even that actually kind of works. Um, but what I am going to try to do here is get rid of some of these ings and see if they truly make my writing better. So uh, what I feel like doing here is another day's hike. So what I want to do is try to turn this verb into just a simple form of that verb. Um, it reads a little bit cleaner and it usually gets rid of some other words. So after another day's hike along the highway... A day that went more smoothly. Now I'll come back here someday and get rid of these uh, adverbs. But I'm just kind of, again, like I said a few weeks ago, I do this every once in a while just to see where my crutch words are sneaking in. And I think it's pretty clear that um, these ing words are definitely sneaking into my writing here. So I just want to spend a little time getting these out so that as I'm drafting, as I'm revising, I'm just more aware of these words so I can catch them. So let's go down here and see uh, see if we can get rid of another one here. Uh, so with grumbling stomachs, we all agreed and kept trudging down the road. So here I've got two, which is especially bad. So um, with stomachs, grum with grumbling stomachs, uh, be pretty easy, I think, here to just go our stomachs grumbled. Um, we all agreed. Oh, so this is a callback to saying we didn't have to steal from anybody. So this is this is clumsy to have in here. So I have to back up a little bit here. It was Caitlin who suggested that it must mean Elsie was close and that there would almost certainly be help for us there. We didn't have to steal from anyone. We, uh, I'm going to throw a adverb in here for now, just because I, I want to get this. Um, clunky piece out of here that really doesn't belong in that language and I know I'll come back and clean that up a little bit so we reluctantly agreed our stomachs grumbled and we see I lose kept because that was kind of propping up this trudging and we trudged down the road so there's still some work to do here I don't know why this is flagging me always correct to grumble our stomachs grumbled it's trying to get me to change this to present tense and i don't know why uh so our stomachs grumbled and we trudged down the road i'm not digging this word i'll come back another time and talk about what bothers me about these kind of words here these directional words uh but as we can see we've made it much more simple here much more direct so our stomachs grumbled and we trudged down the road 
Uh, look how <laughs> this one's especially a problem. I've added an ing to a word that naturally ends with words swinging from the roofs. Um, as we say that out loud, it sounds clunky. And most people, unless you're a speed reader, are um, pronouncing these words internally. Um, it's kind of an interesting phenomenon when they study people that read their thinking um, auditorially. In other words, their brains are doing exactly the same thing internally that they would be doing if you were pronouncing the words. So even though you're not saying this out loud, or most readers aren't saying this out loud, they're still hearing it in their heads as they read. So it's worth cleaning this stuff up when we get a chance. Some of the houses look to be still in pretty good condition, except for the shattered windows and rain gutters swinging from the roofs. Okay, so what I'm trying to get here is these houses have just gone through this earthquake and, um, you know, they, they're, they've they seen better days. So some of the house, houses were still intact is kind of what I'm saying here. Um, I don't like this pretty good condition. That's pretty weak, but that's not what I'm trying to fix today. So some of the houses looks to still be pretty intact. Um, in fact, I'm going to change that even though I'm not doing that right still to be intact. Um, I can lose that comma there, except for shattered windows, right? All these little words that we can just get out of there as we're looking at this is going to make our writing more concise. Some of the houses look to still be intact, except for shattered windows and rain gutters swinging from the roof. So my initial thought here is, you know, dangling, but then I get uh, an ing word in here. Um, so what I could do is just chop these into two sentences. Some of the houses look to be still in intact except for shattered windows. Um, rain gutters dangled from roofs. Some of the houses look to be intact except for shattered windows. So I can feel, like I can kind of feel the sense why I wanted an and here. Because when I just say, look to be still intact except for shattered windows, it sounds like the only thing wrong with them was shattered windows. And of course, after an earthquake, um, it would be more than that. So, so I need something else here. Some of the houses look to still be intact except for shattered windows. And what else would we see? Um... I'm just going to do a quick little search here. Houses after earthquake. I'm going to do an image search here and just see what clues I can find. Boy, these are really far gone. So what I'm really looking for are houses that are mostly intact. Um, so we'll take a look at this one. So hardly intact, but... Um, but still upright, at least. So what am I noticing? I like this slant of the, the, um, uh oh, what's that called? I was going to say a fence. It's not a fence if it's on the porch. Uh, that might be a little far gone. Let me click through some others here. Um, so I'm going to go back. I kind of like this idea of a tilted foundation. Some of the houses still look to be attacked except for shattered windows and um, something foundations. And um, cockeyed, tilted. Uh, some of the houses looks to still be intact except for shattered windows and um, I could just go with cracked foundations right now. Um, see, I, I feel this calling me to give more description here. Some of the houses look to still be intact except for shattered windows and cracked foundations. I either want to do a simile here like... Um, my gut says teeth not crooked in a mouth, but I've used that uh, earlier, so I don't, definitely don't want to go back to that. So the house looks to be intact. Shattered windows and cracked foundations, like uh, nothing's coming to me there. 
cracked foundations that tilted the their porches like a fun house mirror. Ugh. Sometimes I just have to write this out and <laughs> see what it looks like. Uh, tilted their porches like a funhouse mirror. I don't like this. I'm going to leave this for now just for time's sake here. This will definitely be something I come back to and clean up. But I, see, I think you see what I'm getting at there, and hopefully you see how much I, I wrestle with um, each of these lines, right? Um, like I mentioned a few weeks ago, this is going to have to be some kind of um, simile that would resonate with her as a as a character with my protagonist whose viewpoint we're seeing here so i need to think through that a little bit and and see what in her experience would she connect this to it certainly wouldn't be a funhouse mirror so that'll be something i clean up at a later date but let me let me try just another one or two of these ing words we did successfully get the ing word out of there which is what i was trying to do still others weren't recognizable as houses anymore they were heaping piles of rubble that had the detritus of people's lives blowing around us and scattering off into the surrounding woods. Oh my goodness, look at this. In just this uh, part of the sentence, I've got four times, and look how fast they come here, right? That's, even if a reader doesn't notice this, they're going to feel it um, as they're reading this kind of um, lazy writing here. So still others weren't recognizable as houses anymore. Um I'm not sure I even need heaping because we already know that piles are heaping. So they were piles of rubble with, always lose a word when you can, with the detritus of people's lives in the air, in the wind, around us. Um, I don't think I need the scattering off into the surrounding woods here at all. They have sat cockeyed in the ground like a giant had pushed them off their foundations. Oh, so look at this. I had this thought earlier when I was revising, so I've already talked about the foundation. So that's another reason why this little thing I added earlier with the funhouse mirror isn't going to work, because I have it here. So can I just add it? Hmm. Except for shattered windows... Um, uh, again, I get distracted. I'll come back to that. Okay, uh, wind around us. That scattered. Scattered off. I could probably lose this off. That directional thing again. The wind around us that scattered into the... woods that closed us in okay so i've gotten rid of these all of the ing words that's um you know some of them some of them are going to live some of them are going to stay but let me read back through this just to kind of close this off and see if uh that's helped to get all those ing words out of there still others weren't recognizable as houses anymore there were piles of rubble with the detritus of people's lives in the wind around us i don't think i need wind or around us anymore obviously if there's wind it's around us Piles of rubble with the detritus of people's lives in the wind. Um, in the wind that scattered into the woods. So this sounds like the wind scattered into the woods and it's the detritus that scattered. And I'm going to, I do not like this word. I mean, I like that word. It's a cool word. But I don't believe that my protagonist would know that word or use that word. So that'll that'll change someday. There were piles of rubble with the detritus of people's lives in the wind um, that there are piles of rubble with the detritus of people's lives I think I'm going to have to um, break this up to get rid of that. So uh, still others weren't recognizable as houses anymore. I don't know why I have the semicolon there. Um, there were piles of rubble with the detritus of people's lives. 
I, I, this is bothering me to look at it, so I'm going to put remnants. Remnants of people's lives. Now caught up in the wind and blown into the thick trees around us. Uh, so maybe that's better. Um, it's something I'm going to come back to again. Uh, but again, this is just kind of seeing that I've got this crutch that I'm using and how much better this writing gets once I can get out of there. So uh, I've gone a little bit longer again today. Um, I'm going to pause there for today and, uh, and uh, maybe... You feel like doing a little search for all your ing words in your writing. Um, I will admit this is a little, uh, I'm a little frustrated with this when I do a search like this. Now, as I scan forward, I see there are some pretty good sections without ing words. Um, but man, there's a lot of them in here. So now from going through this process, it's kind of on my mind, right? It's top of mind awareness. And as I'm drafting, as I'm revising, I'm going to be really aware of when I drop those ing words in there and make them uh, kind of fight for their lives to stay on the page. So uh, thanks for listening again. I hope you're finding some value in this. Um, thank you for, for uh, uh, those of you who are starting to shoot me some ideas for the kinds of things you'd like to see in these real-time revisions. That means the world to me as well. And uh, as always, I'd love, I'd love it if you'd uh, pass along this information about the podcast, about these real-time revisions, about the Patreon team to your writer friends and uh, getting very excited. We're just... Uh, probably a few weeks away here from relaunching the podcast in earnest with full episodes every week. And uh, I just cannot wait. So again, thanks as always for the support and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.